In this video session we will focus on a very important uh, analytical tool in economics uh, which you will encounter right through your study of economics and this is what we call a production possibility frontier uh, or a PPF, uh, PPF curve. We can also say that it's a production possibility curve or frontier as it's used in, this, in the textbook. Now the first thing that we need to look at, we need to define what is a PPF curve. So this is the first thing that you need to understand. The uh, definition of a PPF curve, basically it represents all possible combinations of two goods that can be produced in a certain period of time and very important under a given state of technology and fully employed resources. Now if you look at that definition on your slide there, uh, two important points are very, uh, you know, very critical here. It, it's the possible combinations of two goods. So we've got only a two good model. We assume that there are only two goods in the economy. That is very important. So this is theory. Uh, we're busy with microeconomic theory. So we deal, uh, when we deal with theory, we assume certain things. So there's only two goods uh, in the economy. And what is the PPA frontier? Just going back to the slide there, it uh, represents the possible combinations of these two goods that can be produced in a given period of time, maybe a year, a month or whatever. And what are the two conditions? Is that uh, we are operating with a given state of technology, so technology cannot be improved. Uh, we, uh, technology remains the same. And fully employed resources. What do we mean by fully employed resources? We simply means that we already uh, use all the resources. That means capital, labor, entrepreneurship, and that's resources. We use all of that resources already to the maximum. There's no excess resources that we can still use to produce, uh, you know, possible combinations of the two goods. So that is the first thing that you need to, to understand. What is a PPF curve? Uh, then when we look at the first type of PPF curve, and this is where a PPF curve can be used to illustrate constant opportunity cost. Remember, we define opportunity cost in the first uh, chapter where we say that opportunity cost is the cost of the best alternative that you forego or that you forfeit when the choice is being made. So when we look at uh, this uh, table here, and uh, maybe we can, that combination or the table there on your slide, you will see the economy produ can produce uh, five combinations of goods. Now that combinations are then being used to plot uh, a PPF curve. So. Um, uh, if we look at the combinations there, uh, A, four books and uh, zero thirds, combination B, three books and one third, and combination C, two books and two thirds, uh, and D, one uh, book and uh, three thirds, and E, zero and four thirds. So these are possible combinations, there are more, okay? But we just focus on five combinations which the economy can produce of the two goods in the economy. Now, if we plot that on a graph in a two-dimensional uh, space. This is a two-dimensional vertical axis and horizontal axis. Uh, let's just, um, you know, use a diagram to plot, uh, that is, uh, you know, books. Uh, books, uh, let's say that is B, and then thirds, that is S. Okay, so when we plot this uh, PPF curve, we will see it will be a straight line, and there's a reason why it will be. Now, if you look at combination A, combination A say, there are four books that is being produced and zero thirds. And combination B, three books, if you just use, that is uh, one, uh, two, three, and then four, and the same on the vertical axis, uh, one. So this is your vertical axis units and your horizontal axis. That is your thirds and this is your books. So when four books are being produced, zero. Uh, certs are being produced. When three books are uh, produced, then one cert is being produced. So this is uh, combination A, this is combination B. When two books are being produced, uh, two certs are being produced. So you are plotting now the, point, uh, the points. You, uh, you know, what you are using is uh, four and zero, three and one. These are the coordinates of your curve. Okay, we call it coordinates. Two uh, books and two thirds. These are the coordinates of the curve. Then if one book is being produced, uh, three thirds are being produced. 
that is the combination for D, and this is C. And then when four, uh, uh, when zero uh, books are being produced, how many certs are being produced? Four. So that is combination E. Okay. So if you complete the points, you will see uh, from point A to point E, uh, this is your PPF curve, say PPF1. So that PPF indicates it's a straight line. Now let's see why is it a straight line. And you can, you can also use the broken lines there to make it easier for you. Uh, that is the broken lines. So these are the different combinations, A, B, C, or, or D, and E, which can be produced uh, with a given state of technology and with the available uh, resources. So let's look at combination A. To move from combination A to B, when you produce combination A, it gives you four books and zero certs. But we don't only want to produce books, we also want to produce certs. So we want to produce maybe combination B, which will give you three books and one cert. Okay? Now, what is the opportunity cost of moving from point A to point B? How many books must you sacrifice or forfeit uh, to produce one cert? So, to move from uh, combination A to B, you are sacrificing one cert to produce one, uh, so one book to produce one set, okay? To move from combination B to C, uh, here you're producing three books, but uh, you want to produce two sets, an additional set. So how many uh, books are you sacrificing? From three to two, it's one to produce a second uh, set. And also from two to one, and you want to produce another set, you want to produce three sets. So how many books are you sacrificing? Every time you're sacrificing one. So to move from A to B, from B to C, from C to D, from D to E, you are sacrificing every time one book to produce an additional uh, set. So basically, what is the opportunity cost of producing every time uh, an additional set? It is one book. Every time it remains constant. So in that case, if the opportunity cost remain uh, constant from moving from A to B, B to C, C to D, or D to E, uh, then the, the PPF curve will be indicated by a straight line. So a straight line PPF, a straight line PPF will indicate constant opportunity cost. Okay, so that is the important conclusion drawn from this. Okay, but opportunity costs are not always constant. In reality, opportunity costs are uh, changing, it's increasing. So, uh, if you look at uh, opportunity costs that is increasing, we can go to slide of exhibit two. And you will see again there are five combinations. Uh, cell phones and coffee makers are the two products here. So, when we draw this diagram, uh, what is being measured on the vertical axis is coffee uh, makers or in this case, uh, sorry, uh, cell phones. Cell phones are measured on the vertical axis, and then coffee makers are measured, the production of coffee makers are measured on the horizontal axis. Okay? Now, I won't ask you in the exam to draw this uh, curve, but you need to know where is it coming from and what is it indicating. And uh, you must be able to interpret this curve. Okay? So, what are we saying? Uh, the, if you just measure all of these points, I'm just going to focus on a couple of points. Uh, that is uh, combination A. Now combination A is indicating 10 cell phones and zero uh, coffee makers. Then is, there's combination B. Combination B is indicating 9 cell phones and uh, 1, one uh, coffee maker. So that is combination B. And uh, combination C is uh, reflecting seven uh, cell phones. So if you look at uh, combination C, C, and then how many uh, coffee makers? Two coffee makers. And then combination uh, D, if you look at combination D, is reflecting three uh, coffee makers and uh, how many cell phones? Uh, four cell phones. That is combination D. And then the last combination is combination E, that is reflecting four coffee makers 
and zero uh, cell phones. So that is combination E. Okay, so that is the four combinations you have, you have plotted the combination. Now there are more combinations, but we just focus on, on the two goods. Uh, that is being, uh, you know, the five combination of the two goods that can be produced with a given state of technology and with the fully employed resources. So if you look at all of these coordinates, what are the coordinates? It's 10, 0, 9, 1, 7, 2, 4, 3. Uh, and then zero four. So these are the possible combinations in this economy. So what are you doing now? You're just completing the points. Okay. So this is your PPF curve. But what is different from this PPF curve to the one that we uh, done in the uh, earlier previously is that this PPF curve is, as they mentioned, is concave downwards, right? So that is very important, it's concave downwards or it's uh, bowed outwards. Concave downwards or bowed outwards. Now, what do we mean by concave? Concave means is that the curve is bulging away from the origin. So this curve is concave. Concave downwards or bulging outwards or bowed outwards. And the reason for this is simply because as you move along from A to B, you are sacrificing one uh, cell phone to produce uh, one coffee maker. As you move from B to C, you are sacrificing two, nine to seven, two uh, cell phones to produce an uh, additional coffee maker to move from one to two. If you move from C to D, what it, there is the, uh, the, the opportunity cost is one. The opportunity cost is two here. Here it will be three from seven to four. So what are you seeing? As we move along, as we produce more coffee makers, the opportunity cost of coffee makers increases as we move along this curve. So, and this is the reason why the curve is bowed outwards or concave downwards, and that indicates is uh, what opportunity cost. It indicates increasing opportunity cost. So. If uh, the, the, the PPF curve is concave downwards or uh, bowed outwards away from the origin, then it indicates increasing opportunity cost. Then we say the curve is concave downwards or bowed outwards. And this is in reality what happens is that the more of a good that you produce, the more coffee makers that you produce, the, the, the more you're sacrificing cell phones. It means that the more coffee makers you, you produce, the higher the opportunity cost uh, of, of coffee makers. So the more is the sacrifice. And that is because of which law? The law of increasing opportunity cost. So it simply means that the, the more of a good you produce, and uh, they mention it in your textbook as well, uh, then you say that uh, the opportunity cost will increase as you produce more of that good. Okay, so we have looked at now, to summarize, we have looked at two types of opportunity cost. We have looked at opportunity cost that is constant, that is reflected by a straight line PPF curve. And then we had an, uh, a PPF curve that is bowed outwards or concave downwards, which indicates increasing opportunity cost. And that is the two types of, uh, you know, PPF curves that we, um, uh, that we encounter. In reality, I will only test you more or less on uh, the bowed outwards or the concave downward uh, PPF curve. So this is the first important analytical tool that you will encounter in, in economics.